Oh, hey, how you doing? Welcome to Tech Ed 2000. I'm your host, Jack Halpin. I want to introduce you to my humble little editing station here. It is all being run by this wonderful uh, 2012 Mac Mini, output into this uh, kind of old but pretty nice HP monitor, being controlled by this booger ball mouse and relatively okay keyboard, and reading data off a Hitachi terabyte drive and a Sabrent drive dock. I want to highlight a particular element of my setup right here by mentioning my 2012 Mac Mini. It sports a 2.5 GHz Intel Core i5 processor, 8 GB of DDR3 RAM, and a Intel HD Graphics 4000, 1536 MB of video RAM. This thing's just fantastic, but even more fantastic is how I was able to get it, more specifically how cheap I was able to get it. Today, I'm going to show you how to get one of these for just two of these. You can get things by doing one of two things. By working and by giving up money. And sometimes you can work to get money and sometimes you can get things by doing a combination of giving up money and working. And that's exactly what I did for the HodgePodge Mac Mini. Here's the story. One day I was roaming around on eBay and I found a listing for a Mac Mini. But it looks something like this. You don't really need to be a computer expert to notice that it's missing some pieces. This Mac Mini is missing the RAM, which goes right there. And it's missing a storage device, like this SSD. And it's missing the proprietary cable for said storage device. And it is missing a fan. I purposefully bought it for only $60 without these necessities. Obviously this thing won't be able to work unless it has these necessities, but hey, only $60, not bad, right? So after I gave up those $60, that's where the work came into play. Well, I mean, I spent a little bit more money, of course, to buy these things. This RAM cost me this amount of money, and this SSD cost me this amount of money, and this fan cost me this amount of money, and this cable cost me this amount of money. After all of that, the cost came out to about $195. With all these pieces, you're able to build a fully functional Mac Mini. And look how much you spent, $195, when if you bought it totally fully built, it would cost you maybe $350 or more dollars. Once I got all these pieces, I installed them like so. Clipped the RAM into its RAM slot. Hi, this is me from 10 minutes later. I did not put the RAM in far enough. You're supposed to do it like this, and then press it down, and there you go. Plugged the fan in and screwed it on. And then the hardest part was painstakingly wedging this rectangular drive into this half semicircle, half rectangular hole with a weirdly shaped cable involved. Basically the only way you can do it is stick that cable in there first and kind of squish it underneath there. After I squish that in there, I put in the SSD like this. Goes in easy. Coming out's another story. And then you gotta kinda finesse that ribbon cable into the drive. There we go. Then you just plug it into one of these little ports. And then after that, you basically have a fully functional Mac Mini, although it is wise to put some sort of legs here. Unless you have this ridiculously expensive black bottom cover thing with vent holes in it, your Mac Mini's gonna overheat like crazy, even with the fan in there. So I went to Walmart and I bought these feet for just like a buck or something, and then uh, they hold it up to allow airflow to, you know, circulate underneath it so it doesn't overheat. And there you go. That's all there is to it. I just want to mention a couple of limitations. So there's one more part that goes over the drive bay that's like a mesh slash 
Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth antenna. Now this isn't required because I've used this thing with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and it's worked pretty okay. But if you're gonna be using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, go ahead and get that part as well and install it on there. The thing is, I don't use Bluetooth headphones with this thing and I don't connect it to Wi-Fi. So I didn't need that, therefore making it cheaper. And that's the whole point of the HodgePodge Mac Mini. Then you just plug it in with any figure eight AC cord, plug in your ethernet. And then you can plug in your display using this uh, Thunderbolt port or the HDMI port that's on there. Plug in your USB devices here, and there's also an SD card slot back there, which makes it even better for editing. And if you put everything together correctly, hit the power button on the back, the light comes on, and it boots to your hard drive. But uh, if you haven't installed um, Mac OS on it yet, you're gonna wanna boot off of a uh, thumb drive with the uh, Mac OS install files all on it and everything. I'll leave a link in the description for a video that lets you do that easily, but uh, Starts up really quickly and works like a charm. For those of you who like lists, here's a list of the steps required to complete the Jack Halpin HodgePodge Mac Mini. Step one, you're gonna go on eBay and look for a Mac Mini that is stripped of many necessary parts and buy it for cheap. This step requires a little luck, so you just gotta be patient and wait for something good to show up on eBay. For step two, you're gonna buy those necessary parts, but restrict them only to the ones that you need. For example, I didn't need the Wi-Fi antenna, so I saved 20 bucks by not buying that one. And step three, you're gonna combine all the parts together to make a fully functional hodgepodge Mac Mini. And that is how you get a pretty good Mac Mini setup for sub $200. If you decide to give this method a try, go down in the comment section, let me know how it turned out. Thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for some more cool content. I'll be back in a couple weeks.